I'm really privileged to have uh, Professor Bibi Dhar here right on the dais. And I consider him as a Bhishma Pitama as far as the mining industry is concerned because I have virtually grown seeing him right from my, I mean, very early days in the college. I have seen Professor Bibi Dhar as a very distinct personality who is omnipresent wherever he is required to share his knowledge with the young mining engineers, with the practicing mining engineers, or with the industry. So I am really privileged to have him here. All the dignitaries, including my today's chairman, co-chairman, Professor Ajay Kumar, and Mr. Rao. I, I have been asked to speak on the constraints which I have been doing it since yesterday, so I changed it a little bit and I want to speak from the point of view of a regulatory regime which is about, which is waiting in the wings to be unleashed the moment the MMDR bill is enacted. So my presentation is on the sustainable mining and challenges which we actually are looking through the constraints in this forum. So I hope all these things are included within that particular thing. So as a matter of fact, if I look at the CSR activities, the economic, legal, ethical and discretionary expectation that society has of organizations at a given point of time. So one word is important, that is the discretionary. So this is very important in present day's context because everybody wants something more than that which Professor Ajay Kumar has already expressed in his deliberations that you should be above law. What law stipulates, they go beyond that as well. As far as the sustainability, sustainability issues, contained in the draft MMDR bill. A quick view of that. The Act addresses issues of sustainability in two distinct ways. First is the sustainability of mining relating to mineral conservations, zero waste mining, increasing the resource base, recycling, beneficiation, etc. The second is the sustainability of the social structures and ecological processes which adversely impact the quality of the li life and what needs to be done to ensure sustainable development. The Act creates two funds, National Mineral Fund section, under Section 50, State Mineral Fund under Section 53. Both these funds are funded out of CES, respectively on customs and excise duties and royalty. Central government can impose a custom duty on the miners up to 2.5% up to and state government can exercise its powers by imposing a 10th percent cess on the royalty paid in a year. The National Mineral Fund can be used for promoting scientific management of mining activities and R&D in sustainable mining and recycling of resources. The State Mineral Fund can be used to develop capacity of the state directorates to achieve the objects of the acts and preventing the detection of illegal mining. The framework will contain guidelines enabling formulation of project level practice for sustainable mining includes life cycle analysis, impact assessments, mitigation interventions, socio-economic development, mineral conservation, waste reduction, restoration and reclamation. The key factor is the consultative mechanism with the stakeholder groups from pre-mining stage to post-closure. A system of public disclosures of mining related activities and environmental parameters to facilitate sustainability audits. Mining plan, mine closure plan will be prepared within the sustainable development framework and mine closure plan updated in draft from after deciding on the post mining land use in consultation with the panchayats. Then the first thing, why for God's sake ASDF is required and why the government of India and all other people they thought prudent to, to be included in the statute. So the various factors are serious community concerns 
irreversible impacts on their lands and livelihood. Not enough demonstrated commitment to manage environmental impacts. Some mining areas are facing critical environmental problems. A significant number of mining areas are located in the heart of India's forest, tribal lands and areas of rich biodiversity. The economic benefits are not trickling down to the people who have the most at the stake. Mining is now moving into more complex geologies and politics. An integrated approach is becoming more necessary. For mining companies, it's about protecting investments more effectively and for longer. It's about getting and developing the social license to operate. Then, what are the key drivers of SDF? These are some uh, points. Rising scrutiny of environmental and social performance by citizens, groups, NGOs, medias and courts. Community sustainable development framework, sir. Community is demanding a key stakeholder role and direct benefits for mining extractive industries. National Mineral Policy clearly states that there is a need for the mining industry to adopt a long-term framework based on sustainable development. Pressure to be more transparent by the community and shareholders, RTI Act. There is growing evidence that adopting sustainable management makes business sense, reduces costs, reduces risk, and generates long-term opportunities and a social license to operate. Now, the sustainable development framework which has been developed by the government of India, it is available on the website. It is, it is a seven principle based sustainable development framework according to which all the state governments are also required to develop their own frameworks for implementation within their respective geographical areas. First of that principle is environmental and social sensitiv sensitivities to be incorporated in decision-making for mining leases. What are the salient points are categorization of mineral reserves and resources based on environmental and social sensitivities. For that particular purpose, preparation of overlay like protected areas, dense forest, scheduled areas, water resources, fragile ecosystems, dense habitats, etc. over mining areas or leases. Identify statutory, statutorily prohibited areas for mining. Inclusion of the risk criteria as decision input for bidders. Demonstrate demonstrable sustainable capacities to be made one of the criteria in bidding process because bidding is coming in the new draft bill. Periodical review of the categorization in consultation with MOEF, Ministry of Rural Development, Ministry of Tribal Affairs and states. And keeping the information on ministry website always available for everybody. What are the challenges or what we call as its constraints while doing so is building a stakeholders consensus for categorization, development of decision making tool with consistent data input at regular intervals, capacity issues of regulatory and monitoring agencies, this is a big uh, question in asking, and applicability on existing ML and delays in case of existing RP and PL. These are the challenges as far as the first principle. Second is strategic assessment in key mining regions. So identification of special mining regions in consultation with the stakeholders, periodic regional study of these areas to assess carrying capacity, which is an important aspect as far as the sustainability is concerned, or strategic regional plan to address environmental and social issues, encourage management systems to implement regional strategies and goals, optimizing number of leases, size and scale of operations, common infrastructures and their management, and clustering strategies, facilitate and encourage responsible mine design, leading to zero waste mining. While doing or addressing this particular principle, there are the again challenges, acceptance by the state government, especially in the, li especially in the light of the capacity of increased work workload, institutional arrangement to coordinate this process, issues of capacity building and sustained funding and monitoring. The third principle is managing impacts at the mining level. A robust environmental and social management framework in the form of policy statement from the mining company, sustainable mine development strategy to be updated periodically, time-bound community development and engagement initiatives, sustainability reporting at mine level to achieve regional and national benchmarks, Intensive use and dissemination of geospatial and geoscientific information at the mine level for assessment, planning and mining activities. This has got certain challenges. State government responses for the additional mandate. 
engagement of government and community on a continual basis and resistance from artisanal and small mine owners for being subjected to monitoring and auditing in line with regional and national objectives. Fourth principle, land resettlement and the other social impacts. Minimization of impacts and displacement due to mining activity, broad consensus for the project among local communities, satisfaction of landowners and other project affected families, the compensation packages and rehabilitation measures, restored livelihood of project affected persons, majority of the land is bought instead of acquired, less court cases and conflict. Challenges are capacity of MOEF, SCPB and IBM or other regulators to examine the social baseline and impact assessment. Concerns among project proponents regarding consultation process, impact assessment resulting in heightened expectations and price escalation. Availability of skilled persons to undertake assessment and provide time-tested solution to the organizations. Then community engagement and benefit sharing is another principle and enforcers and post-closure issues. Recognition and realization of positive legacies of local communities, lower exposure to future potential negative legacies and enhanced value of land post-closure. Applicable social and environmental standards against the performance of the companies is to be measured. Prudent financial planning guaranteeing effective closures. Enforcement capabilities of a regular on technical, financial and economic fronts. A deliverable backup plan clubbed with adequate capacity implement scientific closure in case of forfeited guarantee. And the last and the seventh principle is assurances and the reporting. More transparency among the mining companies. Improved performance on sustainable development indicators. More informed en engagements and negotiations with local communities. Structured documentation on social and environmental performance and demonstration of continual improvement and a plan of action to reach the next set of goals. And the challenges are to provide incentive or disincentives for the mining companies in order to disclose more relevant information. And we are also going to find it difficult to standardize the sustainable development report.